Good evening. Coming up in Melo TV Evening News. People's National Party hosts annual conference. Meanwhile, the Jamaica Labour Party tells supporters that Jamaicans are confident in their management of the country. Elderly man sustained injury after fighting off robber. Foreign Affairs Minister urged developing nations to embrace science and technology. And Trinidadian artist and violinist Kristen Kopikos crowned Miss Global International 2023. And now the news in detail. Hundreds of enthusiastic supporters of the People's National Party, the PNP, flocked Independence Park as the party hosted its 85th annual conference at the National Arena in St. Andrew. Wearing their distinctive orange attire, supporters voiced their desire for a change in Jamaica's leadership, expressing Mark Golding's time has come. Speaking at the event, party leader Mark Golding highlighted several proposed changes should the PNP form the next government. One such proposal included changes to the income tax threshold. Said in May, it is also time to increase the income tax threshold from one and a half million to at least three million to take account of the high levels of inflation since it was last reset seven years ago and give a reasonable buffer for ongoing inflation, which is still a problem. And we're calling on the government to implement that increase. Comrades and friends, my fellow Jamaicans, we live in an era where people want to have a piece of the pie. They want to be owners too. And the People's National Party wants that for them. It is important to build an ownership mindset so that more people can build intergenerational wealth. We want the Jamaican people to feel part of the society and treat it like they have a real stake in it. Economic transformation must have as an imperative the expansion of the ownership base of the society. And we believe that this can be achieved through investment in micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, which are really the most progressive part from a social perspective of uplifting the people through private entrepreneurship. Mr. Golding went on to share that entrepreneurship and generational wealth building should be further encouraged. Those deficits in education and training leave us behind in the global race, the global workforce, as we are not attracting investments in high-paying, high-tech, value-added production of goods and services, which is the key to wealth creation. Most importantly, our society is still suffering from the long reach of negative ideas built by slavery. We must include the teachings of the right excellent Marcus Mosiah Garvey in our schools to build back that self-esteem, that inner confidence and personal inspiration to all our children, regardless of the race. The power, the power of the philosophies of Garvey, of racial upliftment, self-help, collective work, those will allow our children to recognize and believe that they are beautiful and brilliant and can achieve what they will if they set their mind to it and work steadfastly to accomplish their dreams and goals. The party's general secretary, Dr. Dayton Campbell, noted that the proceedings went smoothly with the party's supporters displaying remarkable energy. Dr. Campbell said that the party had anticipated a massive turnout for the event. In the meantime, the Jamaica Labour Party held its central executive meeting in Ocheria, St. Anne yesterday, emphasizing its commitment to the people of Jamaica. We don't seek power for ego. 
we seek power to be able to help people to make the lives of ordinary Jamaicans better. So our mind, our effort, and our energy as a political organization is always about the people. Prime Minister Andrew Holness said Jamaicans are confident in his administration. There is no question that this Labour Party administration has done far more than any PNP administration has done. But the people look at us and they say, this government has more potential. This government can do more. This government has the energy, the, the, the thought, the ideas, the management capabilities to deliver even more. There was a minister who once said that people don't stone floxy mango. Prime Minister Holness reiterated his promise of prosperity to the nation. Our eyes are also cast firmly to the promise, to the commitment of prosperity. <laughs> that we know is the true destiny of Jamaica. The country that we love so much. The country that confounds people. As a small country, we have achieved so much. A 77-year-old retired man is currently in serious condition at the Cornwall Regional Hospital after being shot by a lone gunman. The retiree managed to disarm his assailant just moments before the attack at his residence in Montego Bay Heights on Monday morning. According to law enforcement reports, the retiree was in his garage cleaning his car around 7.15 a.m. when an armed man with a handgun entered the property. The armed robber demanded money from the gentleman who fought back. A struggle ensued between the two men, resulting in the retiree sustaining a gunshot wound. The elderly man managed to wrestle the firearm from his assailant, causing the robber to flee the scene. Upon receiving the emergency call, the police swiftly arrived at the scene. The injured man was promptly transported to the Cornwall Regional Hospital. The retiree handed over a Glock 9mm semi-automatic pistol equipped with a magazine containing four live rounds to the authorities. A manhunt has been initiated to apprehend the robber. Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith has called on developing nations to prioritize science and technology integration into their development plans. Speaking at the G77 and China Summit in Cuba, Minister Johnson Smith emphasized the potential of technological advancements to enhance resilience and economic diversification in the global south. She also highlighted the importance of addressing technology access, the digital divide, and gender disparities while promoting a fair and inclusive environments for scientific development. The minister advocated for the exchange of best practices climate financing that includes science and technology, and provided an update on Jamaica's efforts to expand digital access and internet connectivity. Christine Kopikas, a 25-year-old Trinidadian known for her artistic talents and violin skills, achieved a significant victory by winning the 2023 Miss Global International title. She outperformed 16 contestants in Montego Bay, St. James, and impressed the crowd with her performances in various segments. 
Kopikas, who specializes in painting Caribbean landscapes, has a remarkable journey and her win adds to her list of achievements. She is currently studying business development at Harvard Business School and plans to focus on unmanned aerial vehicles for future technology. The Miss Global International Competition in its 19th year primarily promotes brand Jamaica and received increased support this year. Several awards were presented to contestants from different countries and Miss Global Jamaica also made it to the top 10. And those are the stories making the news this evening. Thank you for tuning in to Mellow TV Evening News. I'm Nicole Hills. Stay safe and thanks for watching.